are the Con Guys, and this is the Con Guy Show, coming to you straight from the nerdy heart of Hollywood, California. And this is Jim with theconguy.com. She's been here with theconguy.com. Katie here, aka the Con Girl. Zordon did not want five teenagers with attitude. My name is Derek Sam. I'm Danae Sams, and that's my brother. We are your home for news, opinions, and interviews from the world of Comic Cons and fandoms, your ultimate insiders for all things. Hello, everybody. I got the DC blue behind me tonight. We are talking about all things DC. James, um, James Gunn, and Safra, uh, Mr. Peter Saffron made the announcements for the. I guess we have like uh, 10 projects all together, five films, five TV products that came out earlier this week. So we have gathered a number of the different con guys that get together and talk about it. <clears throat> First, we're going to be hearing from Austin. He's from the con kids. Jake, he is one of our con guys, uh, correspondents. We don't hear from a lot these days. He's been pretty busy, but we'll hear from him. And then Cheeseman on the couch is going to talk to it. Anyways, my name is Jim Fry, James D. Fry on Instagram at theconguy.com. And tonight we are just talking about all things DC, and I got to tell you, I'm kind of excited. I'm, I'm not going to lie; I'm kind of excited that DC looks like they have finally found their footing. It looks like uh, I think James Gunn and and Peter Saffron is that how you say his name? Saffron, Saffron um, are probably the best things going for right now. So, for those of you who don't know, and we're going to jump right into it. Um, please follow us at. Uh, Please check us out at theconguy.com. Follow us on our social media, theconguy.com, on Instagram, on Twitter. On, t- on Twitter, it's spelled out, D-O-T-C-O-M, theconguy.com. On Instagram, it's just theconguy. On Facebook, the con guy. YouTube, the con guy. Follow us, guys. We uh, want to wanna have you along with this. Follow us, like us, give us some good comments. Um, this is kind of a quick hit this week. It looks like I'm here all by myself. And I do have what we call Bradley Kool Aid. Um, Brad, uh, Brad Young, he is, uh, he's actually downstairs right now. He hates being on camera and he made me a drink to bring on the show tonight. So I guess you could say, people say you should never drink alone. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to bed after this. Anyways, DC Studios has revealed its full slate of movies and TV projects coming under the leadership of James Gunn and Peter Safran. The list is includes five feature films and five television series for HBO Max. That's where the series will be. And this is being called Chapter One, Gods and Monsters. Um, as we all know, just a real quick, again, I just want to remind you guys, we have a cut. We have three different con guys that will be jumping on here in just a second are going to give their, their feedback, their perspective, and their opinions on what we just saw. I'm just giving a little introduction here. Um, so just to let you know, uh, just to give a little bit of a, rem- um, a history lesson, James Gunn is the filmmaker who started back in the trauma days, and then he made some cool films like, was it Squirt? What was the movie he made about the killer earthworm? Squirm? Oh, man, it was a great, it was a great nasty film. But then he came on and he did, um, he came on to Marvel, and he did the Guardians of the Galaxies part one and two, then... He got in trouble with because of some past social media posts. And so he was temporarily fired from Marvel. And James Gunn was an example of when you get canceled, how you should handle it. He was contrite. He was not bombastic and coming out fighting and ah, I got wronged and everything. Um, he, he, you know, whatever. We can we can go back and forth about the James Gunn era but he eventually came back and he is delivering marvel's guardians of the galaxy 3 coming out this year but he you know in the interim he went over to dc he made their suicide squad which uh, was so much better than the first suicide squad and then of course the series um peacemaker which can be seen on hbo max starring john cena anyways that all that being said as we all know for the past gosh 10 years or so probably longer um, the DC comic initiative, the DC comics over at Warner brothers has been kind of a troubled thing. They have some films that kind of hit and some that didn't, some of them that were great and fun. And some of that were not, um, wonder woman. The first one was fantastic. So much fun with Gal Gadot. Um, the first 
Aquaman with Jason Momoa, really well done. Um, I think James Gunn's Suicide Squad was pretty good. The first Suicide Squad. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, I don't want to take a lot of time here rehashing that. All that we know is James Gunn came out. He's been pretty honest in the... By the way, you like my shirt? Batman and Robin, which is one of the series. Let me give you a quick rundown of exactly what he announced, and then we're going to cut over to Austin. Austin's going to tell us what he's most excited about. He's from the Con Kids. And then Jake. Jake um, is one of our experts over in all things Warner Brothers. He used to work over there, so he has a, a cool perspective. And then cut back to Cheeseman. Cheeseman on the couch, who is um, downstairs with a, a life-size replica of Batman himself to kind of go through things. Anyways, this is what we heard. So this past week, James Gunn, if you haven't seen it, there's a cool video online where James Gunn walks through anything, everything. So as we all know, this year, 2023, we are getting Shazam! Fury of the Gods coming on March 17th. The Flash is coming June 16th. Blue Beetle, August 18th. And Aquaman, The Last Kingdom on Christmas Day, December 25th. Of those, Shazam! Fury of the Gods is getting a great big media and promotional push right now with Zach Levi. And it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. But The Flash coming on June 16th starring Ezra Miller is the big, it's been big, it's been the big question mark for a bit of time because Ezra has been having some 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 difficulties and problems, some some mental issues um, involving crimes and whatnot. We don't need to go into all that. But right now, Warner Brothers, this $250 million behemoth of a movie is riding on the back of Ezra Miller. So he's been in counseling and trying to bring him around. Apparently, this new Ezra Miller movie, The Flash, is going to involve time travel. Seems like all big Flash events, Flash points, involved time travel these days. And so what's going to happen is they're going to kind of reset the DC universe, it, it feels like. Uh, some of the characters from the past films may transition to the new films. We don't have that announced as yet, but um, James Gunn did publicly come out and say that he thinks that the new Flash movie is one of the best superhero movies he's ever seen. And that, that's saying a lot. So Flash is a time travel movie. It's going to wipe the slate clean, and we are starting fresh with new stuff. By the way, you see me looking over here. This is the the other thing. We got the DC movies coming up, but did you know that this is, is, is uh, Girl Scout cookie season? I'm just looking over here right now. I have two boxes of tagalongs that I got. Got these Samoas. Of course, the Thin Mints. What is this? Lemon Ups. I've never had the Lemon Ups. I just want to say, if you guys get a chance, go out and support the Girl Scouts, which is a great organization. Love the Girl Scouts. They've been doing so good for so long. And um, more power to them. Plus, we get great cookies. Anyways, that was just a little bit of a side. So here's the movies that were announced by, by um, James Gunn this week. All right, first up, and this is, I think this is the only movie that actually has a date, July 11th, 2025. So we're looking two years down the road. James Gunn is writing the brand new Superman Legacy, which is going to follow Kal-El as he reconciles his extraterrestrial origins with his human family and upbringing. It sounds kind of similar to, you know, basically it's a, it's a Superman origin story, but Henry Cavill is not returning. And that's, you know, caused a, a great deal of controversy and, and nerddom. Um, people say, Oh, and, and James Gunn went out of his way to say Henry Cavill was not fired. He just, you know, this is not the movie that he was not cast in this movie. So whatever. Uh, James Gunn also went out of his way to say, you know, he felt feels like James Gunn was getting dicked around by executives over there. So whatever this case be, the first movie out of the gate is Superman Legacy. I'm going to go through these really quickly now because we're going to jump over to what the con guys have to say. The Authority a superhero ensemble from 1999 published under DC's Wildstorm imprint. The authority is a group of seven heroes with very high concept superpowers. For example, Jack Hawksmore is a psych is psychically bound to cities, drawing a strength from them. It's going to be the first appearance of Wildstorm canon in the DC universe. Wildstorm was a, a um, imprint like a, a subsidiary of the, the main DC. All right. And I'm wearing this shirt because the next movie is going to be the brave and the bold. It's a silver age, DC, silver age, DC comics titled that for about 15 years from 67 to 83. 
starred Batman and Robin in crossover story. So in other words, we're getting Batman and Robin movie. Um, I'm just super excited about that. So we're also going to get Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. We haven't seen a uh, Supergirl movie since 1984, Supergirl, starring Helen Slater as Kara Zorel and Faye Dunaway as her nemesis. And then, of course, here's the, here, this one that's really cool. We're getting Swamp Thing. We've had a couple of Swamp Thing movies, one of them famously directed by Wes Craven back in 1982, I think. Yeah. And DC's studio lineup announcement says only that this movie will investigate the dark origins of Swamp Thing. So that's our five movies. Superman, The Authority, The Brave and the Bold, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and Swamp Thing. I think of all those I'm most excited about seeing that Brave and the Bold, the Batman and Robin. We, re we haven't really had a great Batman and Robin movie, so this might be it. All right. TV shows, Creature Commandos. This is being written by James Gunn. Amanda Waller, who is the director of the Suicide Squad, we have all seen her. She forms another superhero team out of monstrous prisoners, like a Frankenstein monster, a werewolf, a, a vampire, and then a Gorgon. You know, you know, Medusa, who had the the hair with the snakes and turned people to stone. So, this is going to be interesting. We'll see how they do that. So that's Creature Commandos. The next TV series is called Waller. So Waller basically. Um, it's basically stars Viola Davis in the lead role, and it's going to feature Team Peacemaker and written by Chris Henry, who wrote The Watchmen. And Supernatural's Jeremy Carver. That makes me excited. So Creature Commandos, Waller. Then here's a cool one, Booster Gold. This is kind of a comic, a, a comic book, a funny comic book movie or TV series. Um, DC's longtime comic relief character is a time traveler who uses basic technology and consumer appliances from the future to make himself a superhero in present day. Booster Gold. All right. Two more. Lantern. Just going to be about the Green Lantern's corpse. It's going to be a big TV event focused on Hal Jordan from the Silver Age Green Lantern series and Jon Stewart who appeared in 1971, and they're going to be looking at a dark mystery together. And finally, this one's kind of interesting, Paradise Lost, um, basically Wonder Woman. It's uh, it's not a Wonder Woman per se. It's set in Themyscira. It's a show about the history and character arc of you know, Paradise Island, where Wonder Woman came from, the Amazons. Um, it's not clear if, who, if Wonder Woman is going to be at the center of this, but it's being described as a Game of Thrones style drama. So real quick, the five TV shows, Creature Commandos, Waller, Booster Gold, Lanterns, and Paradise Lost. Let me finish real quick. They have another, and they have this weird collection of shows, you know, like Todd Phillips' sequel to The Joker is coming out, Matt Reeves' Batman movies. These are going to be falling under a, a, a banner called DC Elseworlds. In other words, they're over there somewhere. They're not main canon, but they'll exist and kind of complement the whole overall DC um, stuff. Anyways, you're tired of hearing from me. We are going to first hear from Austin. Austin is the Con Kid. He leads the Con Kids podcast, and he has a little bit to say about the announcement. What's up, guys? Austin here, a.k.a. the Con Kid. Just watched James Gunn's announcement, and three projects I'm looking super forward to this year are one, Blue Beetle featuring none other than Miguel himself from Cobra Kai. Looking super forward to that. Um, comes out August 18th. The second series actually is the Green Lantern series. Looking super forward to them using Green Lantern again ever since the disaster that was Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. um, best part about the movie was definitely Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. And then the third and certainly not least, the thing I'm looking most forward to is Booster Gold, the TV series. The idea of a cocky superhero coming back in time and just acting like he's all that, that sounds super fun and entertaining. So I really hope they do some fun things with that. Um, and that's my take over the new projects coming out. Thank you, Austin. That's pretty cool. If you guys get a chance, check out the Con Kids. They're going to be covering a lot of this. Austin's in college now, so he's a little bit, little bit busy. He doesn't have quite as much time on his hands. All right. Jake Thomas. Jake is a guy that has appeared on our show many, many times, and um, we love Jake. He has an inside scoop of all things Warner Brothers. He is also really um, big into comics. He is a uh, a screenwriter. But just to let you know, like most of us are out here in Hollywood, Jake, him, I'm a screenwriter. Cheeseman's a screenwriter, and Jake is also a screenwriter. Jake actually just got 
you know, signed on to representation. So really happy for him. Congratulations, Shake. And me and Cheeseman just finally this week, we've been accepted into the Writers Guild of America West. I'm so excited about that. First email we get is we're going on strike, by the way. Maybe. We'll see. I don't want to put that out there. All right. So Jake Thomas, um, he's one of our experts on all things DC Comics. Jake just bought a new house. He's out in the front yard of his new house, and this is what he had to say. Gang, don't worry. I'm not being hunted by the Blair Witch. Uh, it just happens that there are many different video calls taking place in my house at the moment, and believe it or not, the quietest room is outside. But let's take a look at some of the announcements from DC Studios. Uh, James Gunn, Peter Safran finally told us what's happening. I'm sure everyone's read the list ad nauseum of what's happening in movies, TV shows, so I won't go through an exhaustive list of what's going to happen, but just some general takeaways. I've got some, I'm going to be referencing this as I talk about things. Uh, one of the first things that struck me was it does seem to be kind of a mix of the Marvel method uh, of trying to give some emphasis for some things that we haven't really seen that much of before, and primarily I'm thinking about the what was it, the Commandos thing? The Creature Commandos. This is something that really interested me because I've never heard about this before. <laughs> and I read DC <laughs> Comics. But it's an animated series that's already in the work. Works. Has not been cast yet. And they're looking to tie in this animated series also with actors who will play the live-action version of these characters in feature films or other projects. That's interesting. But that, and also bringing in the authority, um, is something that strikes me as, okay, they're going to go for the more obscure, character-based groups, uh, which probably sounds very familiar to anyone familiar with James Gunn's Marvel work, but trying to emphasize something that's a bit more insular, I guess you'd say, something that doesn't have as much of a predisposed fan base, so they can really focus on making something that stands on a strong story that fits in with the grander scheme as a whole. The other takeaway is kind of related to the authority as well too. That's not, nothing like a kid's book. Uh, and there's a couple of projects here, particularly the one on Themyscira, Paradise Lost, uh, which sounds, as they've described it, like Game of Thrones on Themyscira, uh, predating the Wonder Woman films, as well as the way that they describe the Green Lantern movie, which seemed to be like True Detective with Green Lanterns, specifically Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. Um, I'm curious just how much of the new slate of films and TV shows are going to be skewed towards adults, because think about it. Throughout 2020, 2021, the whole pandemic, um, Birds of Prey, Zack Snyder's Justice League, The Suicide Squad, Pretty much every major release from DC was an R-rated affair, and James Gunn had a hand in that too with the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker, so I'm curious just how much they're willing to push some of the darker elements of these movies when I know that people have kind of chastised DC for going too dark with some of the characters in the past, but it sounds like they're avoiding that with some of the other things, namely Superman with this Superman Legacy movie that's announced. Uh, I liked the words that he used when he was saying, I forget where it was right now, but I saw him basically balancing his Kryptonian heritage and his Earth upbringing, but also I saw one statement, either from Gunn Saffron or someone else, commenting on how they were going to make it about a kind man in an unkind world that doesn't want to be a part of that, and that strikes me as a really nice tone to grab. And just the fact that it's not an origin story, but maybe a young Clark and Metropolis story, I'm getting shades of, um, what was it, J. Michael Straczynski's Superman Earth One, for those who have read that book, or maybe even a little bit of the Mark Wade uh, Birthright, which was one of my favorite origin stories for that character. Again, they said it's not an origin story, which is exciting, but along with kind of copying the Marvel template, I think they're approaching Superman the same way that Marvel approached Spider-Man once they got those film rights, uh, the permissions back, and Tom Holland took over the role from Andrew Garfield. So I'll be excited about that. And the other thing I'm excited about, about with the uh, new Superman movie is it's released in 2025, which is going to be the same year as The Batman Part Two. So we're getting a feature-length Batman movie and a feature-length Superman movie in the same year. 
So that reminds me of back in 2015 when we were supposed to get Avengers Age of Ultron, Batman vs. Superman, and The Force Awakens all in one year, and that was originally going to be the end of fandom as we knew it, which ended up being 2019 as Endgame, Game of Thrones, and Star Wars all came to an end. But 2025 is going to be a nice big year for DC with uh, two new movies from their flagship characters. Um, regarding Batman, it's kind of neat that they're approaching the story from the Damian Wayne angle who got introduced in comics like a little over a decade ago by Grant Morrison. And I'm curious about how this is going to play in with what they've done with Titans, because uh, Titans has really kind of approached a lot of the, the story of the Robins, as you if you approach it that way. Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake. But, I mean, it's kind of uh, an interesting take to begin a Batman story, or a Batman Robin story, with the most lethal, deadliest, uh, psychotic Robin that they have out there who... He became a fan favorite eventually, but also not to give too much away from what happened in the comics, that character did have a beginning, middle, and end, so maybe that's part of the thinking involved in that. They can really build a, um, a complete story around that relationship. I am kind of bummed that they won't try to group the Pattinson Batman into the larger DCU as a whole, because uh, the Batman was one of my f favorite movies from 2022, and I was glad to see it get some Oscar love. But, you know, I think back to 2005 when Chris Nolan rebooted Batman and the very next year you had a reboot of Superman, even though Superman Returns was not the best film, you know, what, were the early Marvel movies all the best film? No, but, you know, you had two, your two flagship characters right there that could have started a whole new universe. We could have had that chance again in 2025, who knows? But those are just some general takeaways. Um, Again, this was all really fun to read, and there's been so no shortage of articles that have been released afterwards, uh, just going over all the different characters that they're going to talk about, like Booster Gold, uh, the other shows. Last point, it's really interesting that um, just like from that Jurassic Park video game sequel, The Chaos Continues, something has survived. Uh, and that is Amanda Waller has survived, <laughs> apparently. So she's going to get her own show, and they're going to continue that thread from the, the DC Universe. So, uh, that, hey, keep an Oscar winner in your tool belt, I always say. That is uh, sound advice, but that's my uh, DC overview. We need to get Jake on the show some more. I just love it when you, somebody has a little bit of a gravitas can come on and tell us about what's happening um so i misspoke earlier it is not a superman origin story it's uh but i from what i understand it's superman around age what age 25 so it's uh towards the beginning of superman's uh you know his adventures his his time as superman so that that's kind of interesting you know and i, I to, to what jake just said it is interesting that um the matt reeves batman is not being brought into the canon but like i it's kind of also interesting. You, I know that the Joker, um, Todd Phillips Joker was super dark and super kind of like out. It's a super R rated version of, of stuff, but like, don't, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe sometimes I was, not sometimes I was kind of thinking that Todd Phillips version of the Joker and Matt Reeves version of the Batman could somehow play in the same universe, but I, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. All right. Last and but not least, Cheeseman on the Couch has some interesting perspectives, um, and he he watched the he watched the the announcements, and he is there with uh, Batman himself. So, all right. Last but not least, Cheeseman on the Couch. Hey, what's up? It's Cheeseman here, hanging out with Batman, also rocking some Hero Within product placement. Uh, just got the James Gunn news here the past couple days, and just wanted to share my thoughts. Uh, Overall, I was very excited when I heard James Gunn would be taking over. Um, but at the same time, you know, James Gunn has a style. I haven't seen, you know, how he produces other content. I did see the Brightburn movie, which I wasn't the biggest fan of. So I'm still kind of somewhat like in the iffy zone, but I've liked, you know, like the Guardians of the Galaxy and the different things he's done with Marvel. So, and what Marvel has really done well is, you know, they make the characters feel like real people and there's, a lot of depth. I just got done watching Captain America Civil War and just there was a lot of relatability in that as far as characters go to just normal people like you and me. But uh, I'm just hoping that James Gunn will kind of bring that into DC and kind of keep that there's a lot of heart and he talked about story being very important and as a screenwriter 
um, I very much care a lot about the story and these things. So there was a lot of announcements made. Um, obviously, as a Batman fan, I'm very excited about the Brave and the Bold. Hopefully that will turn out pretty cool. Um, Robin, was I was always a big fan of the Adam West, uh, Batman and Robin, as you can see. So kind of seeing that new angle of his uh, Damian Wayne, which is actually Robin will be playing his son, which will be a very interesting take. And it sounds like he's kind of a wild child, which will add a good contrast with Batman. Cause again, as a storyteller, having contrast, you know, with the characters, maybe Batman's a little more serious than the Robin character it might be a little kind of unstable in some ways, and it'll create some good uh, conflict between the two of them. Um, I remember seeing a little bit of Swamp Thing when I was younger, so it sounded like he's doing kind of a darker take, but it overall will um, connect to the overall universe, so that'll be very interesting to see how we'll do that. And James Gunn's already done good with these um, different characters that kind of almost have these, you know, alien or monster kind of looks, so um, I'm sure he'll do a great job with that. But again, just hopefully he'll keep kind of the heart. There was a lot of heart in Guardians of the Galaxy with Yondu and and you know the daddy line and all that which you know was kind of a heartbreaker and i'm mary poppins y'all and just other stuff that related to real life um james gunn's always good at bringing like music especially into the storytelling so we'll see what happens and um he's doing his own version of superman which will definitely be interesting and um and especially doing kind of a younger thing so again hopefully the human side will be a big part of that and a relatability of not just seeing him as this big kind of like we're watching from far away, but, you know, making Superman relatable will hopefully be something they're doing. And there's a lot of, you know, other announcements that have been made, but I'd have to say probably the other one I'm most excited about is the Booster Gold, which is kind of this loser from the future that takes the technology of the future to go back and become a big star superhero in the past, which I'm very interested in. And, you know, as someone that also writes for television, this will be a TV type thing. So that, I'd say, has got to be probably one of the most I'm excited about. And they also did mention Lanterns, which is a Green Lantern take, but has a true detective element as a TV series. So interested to see what they'll do doing that. So I'm pulling for you, James Gunn. I like your enthusiasm you had in your video and saying you've been a fan like us since you're a child. So I, I really think that if you're taking over content or being involved, you really need to have that childlike fandom feeling if you're, you know, taking on something that's going to impact so many people. And it sounds like he really does feel passionate and feel like he's a fan of things. And I do like how the, some of these storylines and things he's doing, especially even with the Supergirl, like is more of a modern take of the comic that just recently came out. But then, you know, some of these other ones were like, oh, taken from like different times in comics from like the 70s or 80s so they're doing a whole cool variety of things from looking to the past to the current and all that so i am excited about that and he does do a good job with creatures again and all that so james gunn we're pulling for you hopefully this all will be good and i also did here too one last thing is that i think they're gonna be smart about it and bring in some of these you know like the superman batman and Wonder Woman, Aquaman, they might make some cameos or things along the way to kind of bring these new characters light. Because a lot of times, you know, studios will just do the storyline and it's hard to get interested because maybe you haven't heard of the character. But if they bring in some of these other people to make cameos along the way, it'll help make the transition easier for these new characters that they're wanting to bring to DC. So I um, was hoping they would bring more Superman and Black Adam together, but we'll see what happens with that storyline. And, you know, obviously, you know, there's some movies coming out this year with Flash. I'm most excited about Michael Keaton and Batman. Hopefully there'll be some spinoffs of that. Maybe bring Michelle Pfeiffer back or Tim Burton back to direct. So we'll see what's going to happen. And uh, Batman. <laughs> you know it's kind of crazy like um uh, when's the last time we got this excited about dc movie? i mean that sounds terrible I'm, I'm a big dc fan I, I grew up in dc comics but um we're excited about dc movies right now we're excited and we've been it, it's almost one of those things where every time a dc movie is announced it's get ready to come out all of us fans we go to the we we go just ready to defend it from people who aren't going to like it so much but I mean, this is kind of cool. Listen, let's not pretend like like James Gunn is the second coming or something like that. He might be, but um, 
So James Gunn and Peter Safran together are kind of like the the equivalent of um, Kevin Feige over at Marvel. And good, good. We need that. Like, you know, we need better movies. And, and I'm not, you know, let's not lie to ourselves. The, the Mar Marvel has had such an incredible run. This last year maybe isn't the best part of the Marvel run of the past 12 years, but they've had an incredible run. DC has had been a little bit spotty, had some great, some really fun films, and then some not so great films. Maybe this is the dawn of DC. You know, the last decade was the Marvel decade. Maybe this next decade is the DC decade. That would be great. The thing that's interesting is that where if we are putting Kevin Feige and um, and James Gunn, you know, like side by side, they're the, the they're two sides. There's the Marvel guy and there's the DC guy. The, there is a little bit of a difference, you know. James Gunn is writing. It looks like he's writing TV series. He's writing films. He's like so involved. Whereas Kevin Feige is a little bit less of the writer, less of the writer director. Although apparently James um, Kevin Feige has a Star Wars movie coming out soon. Anyways, it's all so this kind of plays well. I was kind of thinking that. It, maybe I was just being stupid and thinking this. I was thinking that the, the big announcements from DC, they were going to wait until either WonderCon or Comic-Con to have the big panel. But um, James Gunn has set up some anticipation. So Warner Brothers might have a pretty impressive panel this year at San Diego Comic-Con or even at WonderCon coming up in March. So anyways, um, Luke and Jake and Austin, thank you for your input. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm also kind of interested in Waller. Bring back Milo Davis. Let's see how she does. Um, kind of leading another superhero group. I think that's gonna be cool. The Paradise Lost is gonna be interesting. It's kind of a cool play on words, Paradise Lost, Milton's Paradise Lost, Paradise Island, Superman Legacy. I you know, the 1977 Superman starring Christopher Reeve was such a high watermark of of comics and film and john williams score and and you know it's just so amazing i would love for us to get back and make a, a superman movie that captured the goodness and greatness and the hope of that original superman movie back back in the day. christopher reeve and margot ritter uh, just nothing better nothing better if we can somehow capture that superman's a hard one to make because you know they're calling this gods and monsters gods superman superman's basically a a, a modern god myth in in our culture and then the monsters a lot of monsters swamp thing swamp things could be cool anyways um thank you for watching this is our quick hit we heard, you know, we heard the news about the announcement this week so instead of pulling everybody together and onto a podcast we just kind of said hey give us your opinions and let's see if we can pull it all together anyways my name is jim you can find me again at James D. Fry on Instagram, Jim Fry LA on Twitter, but just check us out at theconguy.com. Check out the con guy, the con girls, the con kids. We have a great 2023 ahead of us. And uh, thank you guys so much for checking us out tonight. And uh, we're looking forward to many, many great things from DC. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to The Con Guy Show, the official program of theconguy.com. Find us on the Weeby Geeks Collective or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And now on sci-fi.radio, Saturdays at 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific, both AM and PM. That's 9 o'clock Greenwich. It's sci-fi for your Wi-Fi.